r slash no sleep posted by you slash alec 2004 i work on the government's early warning system everybody needs to get inside right now i work on the government's early warning system everybody needs to get inside right now before you start reading this i'm going to ask you to go inside preferably into the basement or a panic room even better if you have your own doomsday bunker but i assume most of you do not i'm sure you won't but don't worry about me i am safe as are most government employees and it's your safety you need to be concerned about i'm not sure how long it's going to take assuming everything goes to plan you'll be getting one of those alerts on your phone in an hour i wasn't on the team that designed them so i don't know exactly what they will look like but it's probably similar to the false missile alert in hawaii a few years back it'll probably just say seek shelter and then in another hour they will fully start to update the public with the details again i don't work in communications my job is more based around identifying threats i guess you could say my official title is actually national risk assessment advisor which is lucky for everyone reading this because i can fill you in on what's actually going to happen over the next few days as i said in an hour you'll get the official alert i say official but i bet there will be a million leaks like the one you're reading right now doesn't matter what matters is why i'll start off by saying that no it's not north korea or russia or china or iran or any other rogue state launching their nukes no it's not the coronavirus or some sort of world war z type shit although to be fair some sort of zombie virus doesn't sound much more unrealistic from the truth ever since we as a species first came up with the idea that there could be extraterrestrial life we've tried to initiate contact think of the hubble telescope or the voyager probe so far most of the attempts we've made have been unsuccessful most from 1999 to 2003 the first 10 cosmic call messages were sent each message was sent to a specific star system that could possibly hold alien life these messages were supposed to arrive at their destinations between 2050 and 2060 so relatively close it was a long shot the chance of alien life being so close was incredibly unlikely so you could imagine the surprise when we got a response in 2007 it wasn't much but it did seem to come from the direction of the cygnus star system a radio signal that was first picked up on the iss from there it went straight to the pentagon and the kremlin but what was the signal as i said not much at all it sounded like morse code except it didn't seem to mean anything a few beeps then silence it wasn't much to go off we'd had this before typically it's just a rogue signal that's what it was written off to at first until 2010 when we got another response this time it was much more clear again the iss picked it up first nobody knows this but on board the iss they actually have the most advanced signal interceptor known to man whenever we pick up something from space whether it be from another satellite slash rocket or potential alien communication they're the first to know about it this time around it wasn't beeps it was more of a moving sound it's hard to describe imagine the letter u in a sound form with the two sides being a high-pitched sound and the middle being low pitched like a siren this was big news in the mind of not only myself but most of my colleagues and also presumably the russians this confirmed the hypothesis that we have come into contact with extraterrestrial life now we had to figure out what to do next after several meetings we decided that this would be top secret nobody could know luckily the russians agreed next we had to decide whether to respond unfortunately we decided a response would be a good idea when the first cosmic call signals were sent out if received properly they contained what was dubbed the rosetta stone essentially it contained humanity by that i mean it had everything alien life would need to comprehend us as a species it contained math problems music some art footage of people and audio clips of us along with some photos of earth when we responded we sent another version rosetta stone mk 2 not very creative but it didn't really need to be as it was just a fleshed out version of the original we sent it out into space in the same direction we received the signal from and waited in 2013 we got a much stronger signal this time it came in a very very similar digital format to our rosetta stone not in the sense that it contained everything about some sort of alien life more that it was transmitted the same way it's kind of hard to explain but imagine you have a usb drive with some photos on it and you want to send it to a friend who lives in another country so to get it to him 
you mail it. It takes a while, but eventually he gets it. To respond, instead of calling or texting you, he mails you back another USB drive. Do you get it? Again, it's hard for me to explain, as I am pretty much tech illiterate when it comes to anything more advanced than a Word document. Anyway, the signal. This time, it was a photo. It was grainy, and took a few weeks to touch up, but it seemed to show some sort of shuttle. It looked very similar to our NASA space shuttles, except much, much larger. It showed it just above the ground, presumably having just took off from some sort of runway. Trust me, you have no idea of the size of the shitstorm that that image threw up. I don't think I left the Pentagon for a month. This time, we decided not to respond. In 2019, we got another signal. Another photo. Taken from outer space, it seemed like an image of the star Sirius, from the Canis Major constellation. We thought that this was impossible. The distance between the Cygnus solar system and Sirius was enormous, hundreds of light years. For a species to travel that far, in just a few years, was impossible. Any life form that could achieve that feat was far more advanced than we could ever imagine. It's been panic stations at work since then. We've built massive underground tunnel networks and bunkers. Most countries have been notified. The thing is, when we got that message we had no idea when they would arrive, or, more importantly, what they would do when they arrive. Yesterday we saw them for the first time. Several shuttle, traveling in a formation. They got here in less than a year. A few hours ago we lost contact with the International Space Station, and since then it's been pretty quiet. If you're reading this, please hide. Do not leave your houses until the all clear is given. I have to go now. The next story of this video. I'm an Uber driver in Detroit, and I've got some stories to tell. I'm nearly out of college now, about a week away from my graduation. My degrees lasted me four years, and due to my father's death two years ago I've paid for half out of my own pocket. Now, living in Detroit jobs are hard to come by. I was damn near dropping out to join the army just to be able to live before a buddy of mine recommended driving for Uber. I do it on weekends, you get an oddball every now and again but it's decent cash, he said to me after a lecture one day. I already owned an electric car, a old 2009 Toyota Prius, so fuel wouldn't be a massive issue. Besides, I was and still am an extroverted person so I love meeting new people. So, I started driving. I enjoyed it, for the most part. What my buddy had said was not too far off the truth. But shit, I'd be lying if I said I'd recommended it, especially if you live in Detroit. There have been times where I've been so scared I've had to get new seats, let alone new pants. But, since I'm about to end my short career working for Uber, I figured I'd compile all the memorable moments I've had into a piece of writing. So uh, yeah. Here you are dot backslash. 1. I did a pickup once for a slightly older looking dude from a nightclub. He got into the back seat with a significantly younger woman, who seemed either really drunk or really high. I couldn't quite tell but I could smell liquor and weed so really it could have been either, if not both. The guy on the other hand, seemed pretty sober. Naturally, this sent of massive alarm clocks in my head but I decided not to ask questions, and just drive them to where they wanted to go. Neither of them said anything for a while, and because it was so late at night I wasn't really feeling a conversation either so I didn't say much either. I kept looking back at this dude for a while though, something about him just wasn't right. He was older than most my clients, around 40 to 45 with slicked back dark gray hair and brown eyes. No facial hair either, save a small tuft on his chin. The most notable part was his teeth. Whenever he smiled, which he was for most of the trip, I got a glimpse in the rearview mirror. They were crooked to the point of looking jumbled, like they were just dropped into his mouth at any odd angle. Most of all, though, they were sharp. Like, seriously sharp. They looked like they came out of some sort of carnivore not a human. This really gave me the creeps. The worst part was yet to come. When we finally arrived at his destination, it wasn't a house. Well, it hadn't been a house for years. I'm sure you have all seen the photos of abandoned houses on abandoned streets in Detroit, and this house looked just like that. Nevertheless, I pulled up to the curve. Are you sure this is the right address, sir? I asked, while checking my phone to make sure I had gotten it right. No response. Sir? I ask again still looking down. No response. Finally, I look up into the mirror to see. Nothing. No one was in the back seat, not the girl or the man. I checked, and the doors were still locked. I wouldn't normally, but when driving around certain areas you need to lock the door. How the fuck would they have gotten out if the doors were still locked? Also, 
My hearing is in pretty good condition, I never even listen to loud music, so I would have heard them leave. Also looking outside the windows, I didn't see anyone walking. It was a real job, I had been paid for the trip, so it's not like I had imagined the thing somehow. To this day I have no idea. 2. In Detroit, a lot of people go missing, adults and kids. It just so happens that I'd transported a man and who I thought was his son out into the middle of bumfuck nowhere, just for the dude to kill the kid and burned the body. At least, that's what the police told me after rounds upon rounds of questioning. You see, after I had finished that trip I called it a day and went to the local corner store on the way home to pick up some things, and lo and behold who do I see on my milk carton other than that same fucking kid. I called the police, and it went from there. They never found the guy, but I've linked him to three other missing children in the area. This one still messes with me. 3. Here's one that more what the fuck than particular creepy. I picked up this guy once, from a small house a little ways out of downtown. He was tall, at least 6 comma 4, and quite lanky too. I was in a good mood that day, so I tried to make a bit of conversation. I like talking with my passengers, as I said before I enjoy meeting new people. Anyway, this guy says almost nothing. Like, one word responses to every single question. Eventually, we get to his destination, another small house about 10 minutes drive from the pickup point. He gets out, says goodbye and everything seems normal. I drive off, and must have made it to around 30 miles per hour when I hear a knock on the window. It's the same guy, running. He motions to pull over, which I do. In a shock, I roll down the window to ask him what's up. Sorry, I left my phone in the back seat. No context to the fact he just ran faster than anyone ever. Initially, I thought my speed dial was fucked but I had it checked and it was fine. 4. I always save the best, or in this case worst, depending on how you look at it, to last, so here's the one that keeps me up at night. I pick up this woman just outside of downtown around midnight. She hops in and starts to berate me, asking me why I took so long. Taken aback, I apologize. She immediately starts to break down and cry, sobbing and just tells me to drive. The trip's a long one, half an hour to the airport. Along the way she starts to talk several times, before just going back to crying. Eventually, she spits tea out. He's coming after me. That's all she said. I asked her if she needed me to call the police, but she said they wouldn't do anything for her. He's gonna take me away, with him, she blubbered out between quite sobs. She went on to say other things, but they were inaudible mumbles. The last thing she said before I had to drop her off was, the nine rouge, and he's getting close. Yeah. That was all the motivation it took for me to get her out and for me to speed off, as fast as my shitty little Prius could go. The Nine Rouge, for those of you who don't know, is what I once believed to be anther bullshit fairy tale about a little demon that roams the streets of Detroit, causing all the bad things to happen for the city and dragging people back to wherever he came from. Not being a superstitious person, I never believed in it. Now I do. Why? Because when I checked the news later that day the woman I had picked up was found, dead. Not too strange, but definitely creepy that they found her body. The part that got me was the fact that police said she was dead for at least a month before they found her. I have a few more stories that I might tell tomorrow, but if you're from Detroit or if you just have any info on the Nine Rouge I'd love to hear it, because the last sighting of it was back in 1976, but I know it's still around.